Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. In today's fast-paced, ever-evolving job market, achieving career success can feel like navigating a labyrinth filled with misconceptions about what truly drives progress and satisfaction at work. It's easy to get overwhelmed and question how to advance professionally. However, there are many practical strategies you can use in the early stages of your career to support your long-term ambitions while ensuring that work is a fulfilling part of your life, not an ongoing source of grief. This summary sheds light on four core aspects of the professional world that you'll likely encounter as you navigate your career. We'll investigate how to recognize and avoid toxic workplaces, how to exit organizations that don't align with your needs or goals, best practice tips for acing interviews, and how to negotiate the terms of your employment. By the end of the summary, you'll be equipped with knowledge and strategies that will help your career thrive. Ready to give yourself a professional edge? Let's get started. Chapter 1 Learning to Spot Toxic Workplaces Will Spare You Heartache. Learning to spot toxic workplaces will spare you heartache. One of the big questions that comes up as you try to navigate your early career path is whether it's better to stay in your existing position or move on. The common advice is to remain in your first job for at least a year to gain experience. That's a sound rule of thumb, but it might not hold in a toxic workplace. Sometimes you have to call it quits for the sake of your mental health, even if it's not the savviest move you can make in your career. As the old saying has it, prevention is better than cure. And the easiest way to avoid getting caught up in this dilemma is to learn how to identify toxic workplaces. Red flags are usually evident during the interview process. Your best bet here is to inquire about internal promotion rates within the department. A lack of internal promotion signals a disregard for employee development and growth, a sure sign of toxicity. Observing how a company handles departing employees can also provide insight. For example, if employees are quickly escorted out after giving notice, it might indicate a lack of respect and trust. Another red flag is the presence of an us-versus-them mentality, where employees feel the need to protect their turf rather than collaborate. An environment like this can stifle the growth and development of younger, less experienced professionals. Furthermore, consistency in leadership from the top levels, like CEOs, is essential. If a company's priorities are constantly shifting, making it hard for employees to focus and deliver consistent results, it suggests a lack of clear direction and stability. This type of environment can be frustrating and demoralizing for employees who may feel they are navigating a perpetually changing landscape without adequate support. Finally, healthier organizations are often characterized by a sense of accountability and direction that starts from the upper echelons of management. In contrast, toxic organizations frequently blame lower-level employees for broader systemic issues without making any significant changes at the top. For anyone stepping into the professional world, it's vital to be vigilant about these warning signs. Identifying and understanding the dynamics of a potentially toxic workplace can empower you to make informed decisions about when to look for opportunities that better align with your values and career aspirations. Chapter 2. Leaving a Job Requires Careful Planning Leaving a job requires careful planning. Okay, let's say that you've been unlucky enough to end up working for an organization whose values don't align with your own. What's your best strategy? One effective approach is to engage in open dialogue with management before making any drastic decisions, like submitting your resignation. This step is often overlooked by younger generations, such as Gen Z and Millennials, who might prefer to leave rather than confront workplace issues. Speaking up offers a chance to address and potentially rectify problems. Having an honest conversation with a manager about the discrepancies between personal expectations and the realities of the workplace can open up opportunities for change. During such discussions, remember to approach the situation tactfully, focusing on understanding the manager's intentions and perspective, rather than placing blame. Asking clarifying questions, such as, is that what you intended? 
or is there something going on I don't understand, can lead to more productive and insightful conversations. This approach not only fosters a better understanding, but also highlights your willingness to resolve issues constructively. However, some situations may be beyond repair, regardless of your efforts to address them. In these cases, preparing to exit the company becomes necessary. Plan your departure thoughtfully, taking time to secure short recommendations from colleagues, which can be invaluable for future opportunities. It's also important to reflect on which aspects of a workplace align with your personal values and goals before jumping into another position. Rushing into a new job without thorough consideration can lead to repeating the same negative experiences. Much like personal relationships, leaving one toxic work environment hastily can result in entering another similar situation. Slowing down and evaluating what truly matters in a professional setting can help you select a healthier and more fulfilling work environment for the next career step. Ultimately, understanding personal values and professional priorities is key. This will not only help you make better decisions about when to leave a toxic workplace, but will also guide you in choosing the next opportunity more wisely, ensuring that it aligns more closely with your career goals and personal ethics. Taking the time to assess these factors carefully can prevent a cycle of dissatisfaction and contribute to a more successful and rewarding career trajectory. Chapter 3 Attention to Detail Makes All the Difference in Interviews Attention to detail makes all the difference in interviews. Now that we've covered how to leave a job that doesn't suit you, let's take a look at landing a job you love. Obviously, the interview process will be pivotal. It's also no secret that how you present yourself plays a significant role. But what does that mean in practice? The aim here is simple. You want to appear polished and confident without overshadowing your qualifications. Planning your outfit and overall appearance shouldn't be left to the last minute. Preparation allows you to present yourself as put together and understated, helping maintain the focus on your skills and suitability for the position. Don't underestimate the importance of cleanliness and neatness either. The last thing you want is an unkempt appearance, distracting the interview panel from your talents. If your hair or beard needs trimming or styling, do it before the interview. Keep your nails short and clean, opting for neutral tone nail polish if used at all. For makeup, choose subtle, natural looks with products you are familiar with to avoid any mishaps. On the day of the interview, ensure your teeth are thoroughly brushed and flossed. Style your hair so that it remains out of your face, maintaining a neat appearance throughout the interaction. Fragrances should be avoided during in-person interviews to prevent discomfort due to allergies or sensitivities. However, for virtual interviews, wearing a scent that boosts your confidence could be beneficial, given that it won't affect the interviewer. For remote interviews, lighting and background are critical. Use natural light if available, or invest in a ring light to enhance your features on camera. If the quality of your webcam is subpar, consider using a high-resolution cell phone camera placed at eye level. This setup ensures a professional and flattering visual presentation. Keep your background simple and uncluttered, using a bookcase or plain wall, and avoid any gimmicky virtual backgrounds that might divert attention from you. Remember, the objective is to feel great and appear effortlessly competent. This preparation not only contributes to making a positive impression, but also boosts your confidence, reducing anxiety and allowing you to focus on articulating your qualifications and fit for the role. This approach underlines the importance of attention to detail, not just in how you prepare your answers, but also in how you present yourself, which collectively can significantly impact the outcome of your interview. Chapter 4. Negotiations should cover more than just your salary. Negotiations should cover more than just your salary. If you ace your interview, you might be presented with a job offer. And a job offer means negotiation. There's your pay packet, for starters. But don't overlook the other ways in which you'll be compensated for your work. 
financial negotiations cover everything from bonuses to benefits and perks. Start the negotiation process by timing discussions about salary strategically. Avoid discussing specific numbers early in the hiring process when recruiters ask for your salary expectations or past earnings. By deferring this conversation until an offer is made, you position yourself to negotiate from a point of strength, focusing on the value you bring to the role rather than past compensation. This approach isn't only strategic, but often necessary, as some jurisdictions legally prohibit potential employers from inquiring about your salary history. When it's time to discuss figures, thorough research is key. Utilize resources like Glassdoor, Payscale, and LinkedIn to understand the standard compensation for similar positions in your industry and geographical area. From this data, develop three critical numbers. Your wish and optimistic but reasonable figure to kick off the negotiation. Your want a target salary you'd be happy with. And your walk the minimum offer you'll accept. Beyond salary, consider the full scope of the compensation package. For example, if an annual bonus is part of the offer, check if it's prorated based on your start date. Many professionals miss negotiating the terms of their first-year bonus, potentially losing out financially. If a bonus isn't included in the initial offer, consider negotiating for one by aligning it with specific performance metrics that exceed expectations. This approach shows your commitment to contributing significantly to the company, aligning your incentives with the company's goals. Successful negotiation involves understanding what constitutes a win for both parties. Companies appreciate negotiations that are tied to performance and contributions rather than those driven solely by an individual's desire for a higher salary. By aligning your requests with the company's objectives, you demonstrate a partnership mindset as opposed to a transactional one. In summary, effective negotiation requires preparation, timing, and a clear understanding of your own value and the potential employer's perspective. By approaching the negotiation with well-researched data and a clear strategy, you position yourself to achieve a compensation package that reflects both your worth and your future contributions to the company. Chapter 5, Failing to Plan is Planning to Fail When It Comes to Raises Failing to plan is planning to fail when it comes to raises. Negotiating isn't something you only do when you start a new job. It's also a vital part of managing your career trajectory within a job. Let's wrap things up, then, by looking at how to best negotiate a raise in your current organization. First, though, a bit of good news. Given the trend of employees switching jobs for better compensation, companies are increasingly open to improving pay packages to retain talent. There are plenty of fish in the lake, in other words. All you have to do is reel them in. Here are five strategies to help you do just that. Strategy 1. Proactivity is key. Waiting passively for a raise is less effective than actively asking for it. Initiate the conversation with your employer rather than waiting for them to offer a raise. This shows initiative and an understanding of your worth. Strategy 2. Negotiations don't stop at salary. Consider other aspects of your compensation that are important to you, such as work flexibility, remote work options, the timing of future raises, bonuses, equity, additional benefits like cell phone stipends, paid training, more vacation time or even a title change. Each of these elements has value and can be part of your negotiation. Strategy 3. Preparation is crucial. Start by identifying your leverage. Leverage can be either positive, highlighting what you bring to the company, or negative, pointing out the potential loss to the company if your needs aren't met. Positive leverage is generally more effective and sustainable. It involves demonstrating the tangible results you've achieved for the company, which justify a raise, such as securing new clients or surpassing project targets. Strategy 4. Timing and tact matter. 
Opt for a moment when the company is in a stable financial position or when you have recently demonstrated your value through a significant achievement. Approach the conversation with a plan that not only convinces your manager, but is also compelling enough to be escalated up the chain of command. And finally, strategy five. Negotiate smart. Remember, negotiation is a two-way street. Be open to feedback and ready to discuss multiple aspects of your compensation package. This flexibility can lead to a more favorable outcome, balancing your needs with the company's capabilities. By executing these strategies, you'll position yourself to successfully negotiate a raise that reflects your value to the company while contributing to your long-term career growth. This approach ensures that the conversation is based on merit and fairness, enhancing your professional relationship and setting the stage for future success. Final Summary In this summary to the Unspoken Truths for Career Success by Tessa White, you've learned that successfully navigating career challenges involves identifying toxic workplaces, engaging proactively with management, preparing thoroughly for interviews, strategically negotiating compensation and effectively asking for raises. Key strategies include evaluating company culture, timing negotiations after job offers, presenting yourself effectively in interviews and leveraging achievements during raise discussions. These approaches will ensure that you articulate your value, align your needs with company goals and achieve a fulfilling career trajectory. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, Please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.